Dr. Craig, one of the objections which has been raised is the first law of thermodynamics, the rule that matter and energy can only be rearranged, or in other words, that matter is neither being created nor destroyed. Yeah. What's funny about this objection is that this is not an objection to the existence of God. This would be an objection to the Big Bang Theory of the origin of the universe. Mm. It would show that the Big Bang Theory of the origin of the universe is false, because according to that theory, all matter and energy, even space and time themselves, came into being at the moment of the Big Bang, and are therefore not eternal. They haven't Mm. always been there in the past. So if these fellows were right, all contemporary cosmologists who believe in the Big Bang Theory of the origin of the universe would be contradicting the laws of thermodynamics. And that's hardly the case. Why? 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 Well, because the laws of thermodynamics, in particular the law of the conservation of matter and energy, only applies once the universe comes into being, it applies at every moment, uh, at every time, and every point in the universe. But it doesn't apply to the origin of the universe itself. And that's why cosmologists don't consider that the law of conservation of uh, energy and mass is violated by the Big Bang Theory of the origin of the universe. In fact, the uh, atheist fellow mentioned the laws of thermodynamics. He might have wanted to talk about the second law of thermodynamics, which says that in a closed system, uh, things tend toward increasing disorder. Now, the universe on the atheistic view is just a gigantic closed system because it is everything there is and there's nothing outside it. And what that implies is that given sufficient time, everything in the universe would grind down to a state of maximum disorder. So if the universe has existed for infinite time from eternity past, why is it that we don't find ourselves in this sort of thermodynamically disordered state? Uh, I think that the best answer to that is that the universe has not existed forever, It began a finite time ago in a low entropy condition, and the thermodynamic clock has been running ever since then. So the evidence of thermodynamics itself suggests that the universe and matter and energy are not infinite or eternal in the past, but had an absolute beginning. To remind ourselves of the argument again, we have premise one, whatever begins to exist has a cause. Premise two, the universe began to exist. And from that, we draw the conclusion that the universe had a cause. The universe had a cause. The universe had a cause. So we ask another question. What is the nature of this cause? And the nature of this cause upon conceptual analysis, which means critical thinking, thinking about this cause, we come to some startling conclusions. This cause must be one. The reason for this is because if we use the philosophical principle Occam's razor, which posits that we do not multiply entities beyond necessity, then we conclude it must be one. This cause must be uncaused, as we have already discussed the absurdity of an infinite regress of events, similarly with causes. This cause must be immaterial because it created the sum of all matter, which is the universe itself. Significantly, brothers, sisters and friends, this cause must be personal. The reason I'm saying this is how else can a, an eternal cause bring into an existence a finite effect, the universe that had a beginning in time. It must have chosen the universe to come into existence and choice indicates a will and a will indicates a personality. So, we have concluded the traditional view on God that a transcendental, immaterial, uncaused, eternal being exists. Being exists. Being exists.